Here at Gruntwork, we've got a product called Gruntwork Pipelines. It's our continuous integration, continuous delivery solution for infrastructure and applications. The pipeline automates applying changes to resources and destroying resources managed by Terraform modules. It consists of a CI server and a Gruntwork ECS deploy runner. You can learn more about Gruntwork pipelines, including how to set it up, in our guides on gruntwork.io. This walkthrough starts from an already set up pipeline on an example Gruntwork reference architecture. The Gruntwork RefArch is a customizable, battle-tested, end-to-end CIS compliant IAC solution. You can buy it from us for a flat fee, and it comes with Gruntwork pipelines. In this video, I will show you how to undeploy the sample apps that you get from the Gruntwork reference architecture using the Gruntwork CICD pipeline. Here's a sample app running in stage, gruntworksampleapp.rowstage.com. This is my own little domain. And I will show you that these links are working. So let's go into cache, backend, DB, and regular old backend. So we have our service call to Redis, seems to be coming back just fine. We're hooked up to our MariaDB, that looks like it's coming back just fine. And we're hooked up to just the base path. Um, this is like the API backend. So that's all looking good. I'll close these. And I can also show you, for example, that the front end sample app is, is all running fine. And I can also show you here is the actual repo in GitHub. And we'll also be periodically checking the uh, Circle CI jobs that are running. Now, before you actually destroy the staging sample app, you have to set the force destroy flag on the front end app to true. This will allow Terraform to destroy the S3 bucket that's used by the front end sample app. You have to do this, otherwise, when you try to run the job for actually destroying it, once you've gone through the whole process to actually approve the job and everything else, at the very end, you'll get to a point where it fails. And so to avoid that, you need to set the force destroy flag to true. And so I have done this and I pushed um, it to a branch and I can just show you, I'm gonna use my shortcuts because that's easiest for me. I have these git shortcuts. This is like a git show that shows you just the file that was changed. So you can see in the previous commit on this branch, I modified the front end Terragrant HCL, and I can show you the actual change. So we modified the inputs to have this force destroy ingress access logs equals true. If you do not have this flag in your Terragrant HCL, because it was recently added as of this video, you'll just need to add it yourself manually and set it to true. Um, and I pushed that up to this branch, so you can see my branch history. So I am off of main, uh, created a new branch, and there it is. And I've also just recently run the job. So you can see here two minutes ago on the set force destroy. Uh, let's look at it. Now you should be familiar with this if you've come this far, that when you run a job on using the Gruntwork pipelines on a branch that isn't the main branch, you should only have a plan to look at. And so you do want to check out the plan, make sure that it looks right. Now, if everything looks good, you don't need to really check any of these other steps. You want to just check the run plan. And um, let's scroll to the top and see what it does here. No modules were deleted, so we skipped the plan for that. And then we noticed that one of the modules was updated, and that is correct. We did update the staging sample app front end. So you can see the command it's actually running. I uh, provided this for... Um, your debugging purposes. So you can see this has changed force destroy from false to true. And um, policy changed and this flag changed. Looks like the, yeah, so that changed on a bucket. Okay, this looks fine. This looks good to me. And what you do once you're happy with that is you get approval for this PR and you get it merged into the main branch. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and merge it myself. So let's go into my pull requests. I'm going to say, um, looks good to me. <laughs> so this is very much like 
that kind of crap out. And I merge this. Once I merge this, uh, what we're going to do is see that it applies on the main branch. I'm going to go ahead and delete the branch and go back to CI. And you can see now the main branch, uh, well, the main trunk, I suppose, is running uh, automatically. It's going to run all of these steps. When we get to the hold step, we should get a notification. Uh, in, and I have it set up with my Slack. And you should also see the plan output yet again. Okay, the plan is complete. I'm, it's going to run this notify. I'm going to check the plan again just to show you that due diligence is worth it. Two to change. Oh, and I got a notification. So here it is, on hold waiting approval. This is kind of what it will look like. You can view the workflow by clicking here. And when you click here, there should be a way to approve the job. Ah, yes. So it doesn't show a thumbs up here, um, this view, but I really like the thumbs up view over here. So when you get to here, there's this little button. It's great. So I'm gonna use this button because I like that button. And then we check out that deploy. This is probably fun to see because you'll actually see it running apply. So I'll let that run and we'll come back once it is at a good spot. So it has run the plan for the apply and it looks the same as what we saw. Should be two to change. And now it's going to execute that plan um, one changed. So I think the, it modified the bucket and it oh, let's take a look at that again. kicked us out of there and it read the policy. So I think we're still okay. Uh, it must have realized it didn't actually need to change something when it got there. So if you see this, it's probably fine. And we can check uh, just to make sure that the sample app is running. Everything's still cool. Go to the slash, mm, yes. And we can go to DB, for example. Yes, looks good. Okay, so everything's fine. So now is the fun part. We're going to destroy the sample app. So I'm going to create a branch check out row destroy I should have it yep stage sample apps and I'm going to room ref the sample app stage us west nope that was it us west stage services and sample app let's just do sample app star and I always check my rimref commands like a, a lot before I hit enter, but I think this is going to work. <laughs> and we're doing, let's do a git status. Four files were removed. That looks right to me. And um, we can commit this. So let's say um, destroy stage sample apps. Uh, actually, probably the best way is to say delete stage sample app folders. Just like, because I'm very literal when I read things, so I know that this will make sense to me later. Uh, and there we go. And we're going to push that to this branch, which I haven't set up upstream yet. Oh, uh, let's see. I usually use a shortcut for that as well. An even shorter shortcut than this, if you can imagine it. So let's run back to the repo and see what happened here. Uh, I should have, yes, I have a new branch and I'm going to check out this, take a look at this. It looks like there's four things that were all deleted. That looks fine to me. Create the pull request and get my own approval. <laughs> Um, 
once the plan is done, that is. So this is the important part. You want to check the plan here. Using the Git workflow is really helpful. You'll want to check the plan destroy output for both of these. They will come in succession. So once you scroll to the end of one of them, you'll still need to look at the next one. Because it's actually running this command here per module folder that was changed. So here, it, the first one that's running it on is the back end. So you, that's actually kind of important that you check both of them. The back end, four to destroy. The front end should be seven to destroy. So it's about to give us the output there. That was what I suspected, but you want to check that this makes sense for your case. Deployment finished. Uh, we can go back to, I like to go back to here to see all the jobs. And success. So back to here. All checks have passed. I'm going to go ahead and approve my own. Uh, well, I will, I will leave off the LGTM this time and confirm the merge. Delete the branch for now. Now, <laughs> this is the next fun part. There should be a job on the main branch or the, the main trunk for running all of the steps. That means plan and the actual destroy. Back end four to destroy, looks good to me. Waiting on the front end. Seven to destroy. That looks good. Let's go back. Okay. So you can click this thumbs up button to approve the plan. I think we're going to go ahead and approve that plan. It looks good to us. So I, I really, I just want to click that. It's, it just feels so good. So we have approved. The CICD pipeline makes sure that you need an additional approval to run a deploy that's an apply or a destroy. And you should have branch protection set up such that you need an additional approval from a non-contributor to approve a PR getting merged. So those are like two levels of protections that we have in place. Let's take a look at the deploy. You can see what's getting destroyed. So it's going to run the first one first. It will only run one at a time. Uh, we will eventually support destroy all, but for now it's going to run destroy per module, per module folder. So you can see here it destroy the app, uh, the sample app backend, and then it's running the plan for the destroy on the front end now, or it already completed rather. And now it's actually running the destroy. Destroy the application, destroying the bucket. If you did not set the force destroy flag to true prior to destroying, then you will run into an error here. So it does slightly annoyingly, I will admit, <laughs> it does take two commits to delete something. In this case, uh, something with an S3 bucket. That's not always the case, but for the S3 buckets, you do need to set force destroy true uh, and then wait for that to completely apply and then destroy, start the destroy process. So I should be able to check that it's destroyed, like these things shouldn't even work anymore. Can't be reached. So sad, so sad. Yes, but that's what we wanted, so it's not sad. So happy, so happy. This is still destroying. I can also show you in the console what it looks like. So let's log in. Let's call it login. This is what I use to, to do it. Row stage. Enter my code. My 2FA device. And I 
I should have that copied now. I will open up a new container window for stage. Let's take a look at the EKS clusters. Uh, you can check and just make sure everything is still there. Nothing else is destroyed, just the sample apps. Um, so we can also check that the pods maybe are not running. So let's do, um, I'm going to show you what it looks like if you don't have uh, kubectl configured. So we're going to, um, yes, we're going to open up kubeconfig, kubeconfig, yes. And let's look at stage. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to delete this cluster and delete this. So this is what you can do if you just want to delete a couple of things to reconfigure your kubectl setup. So uh, let's delete that. And then current context, I'm going to reset this back to Docker desktop because that one's like my default. I don't want to leave it empty. And then users, I uh, don't want to leave the actual users. We want to do the individual user. Um, save that off. And now I'm going to configure again. So let's look for my configure um, command. I already have it here. You will need to make sure that you have the right region, the right account number, and the right name of your EKS cluster. Run that. I need to off again. And it says it successfully saved kubectl config. Great. Now um, I will run the get pods for this. So here I'll use the applications. I want to see what's running in my applications. No resources found in applications namespace. Cool. And cube system. I still have all these other things. So we only deleted the sample apps, right? We didn't delete all these other things. But you might want to, at this point, if you wanted to just remove all of EKS, you could decide how, how you're going to go about that. If you're just replacing the sample apps with your own apps, then you don't need to do anything else. You just need to have your, your actual application running on the cluster. I don't in this case, as you can see, but if you did, you should have something showing up here. Okay, uh, let's run back to the job, uh, which is here. Are we done? Okay, apply complete. Everything destroyed that was slated for destruction. And that is how you destroy the sample apps. And now you can go forth and destroy using the CI/CD pipeline. Thanks for watching.